This is Darren Kuhn with the Masculine Journey podcast, where we search the ancient paths to find ways that God brings light into a dark world and helps set men free from the struggles that we all face on a day-to-day basis. Your Chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it, share it, but most of all, thank you for listening and for choosing the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. Bombs, fire, war, terrorism is not just happening in the Middle East, it's happening in Haiti. A lot going on. I'm with a man who is with me. We just finished Wednesday in the Word. There's guys praying, there's guys fellowshipping, but Robinson, God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. How did you enjoy Wednesday in the Word? Uh, what? Did you enjoy it today? Oh, yeah, I'm enjoying it today. I'm enjoying your message, right? Very good. And it, it taught me when you say that found someone preaching Jesus. That's so exciting. That's that's what I'm doing. That's what I, I was doing in my country. You know what I'm saying? And I'm back in the U.S. right now. So I'm so excited to meet you. Yeah, and your yeah. family's here and you, you came... But you, you know, you could be dead right now. I mean, like yeah. you were in Haiti and it's some bad yeah. stuff. They, they didn't want you alive. You're spreading the gospel. Our friends at Lantern Rescue and some other key kingdom folks, tell us your story. First of all, how did you get saved? Okay, yes. I was living in Fort Jack. It's a town in Haiti. You know, Fort Jack is a town that I was living with my, my family, my son, Jonathan, and my wife, Maniesta. So she went to work on Saturday and I was staying in my house. So I heard that the gang is coming. They came gunshot is, you know what I'm saying? And people scatter and they come in my house and I move to another place, okay? And a friend called me and said, Robinson, come here and I stay in a place for two months. That's terrible. And it's 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 a risk when you go outside to buy food, you know what I'm saying? Go somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Because the gang is control every hour. They're looking to either kill you, take you captive, they rob you. It's dangerous. They can kidnap you, asking you money that you never counted in your life. So that's because since the assassination of the president, the, 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 the country upset down, you know, the corruption. You know what I'm saying? So I call for help. You know what I'm saying? I call for help. And uh, because the guy used to have different trip from in Haiti. And when I call them, they are... They'd be excited to sponsor me and to come here. Wow. Yes. Hallelujah. So, Lord, just through connections. I mean, because um, Brother Craig from Ohio, we've been friends forever. We got him hooked up with Lantern Rescue. He's been supporting them. They're doing great work, yeah. saving yeah. Kid, little children out of yeah. all this horrible human trafficking all over the world. And they developed some friends and contacts in uh, over in Haiti. And there you were stuck with your family trapped. You could have been dead like yeah, the next yeah, day. The gangs yeah, were yeah. trying to kill you, Absolutely. especially when they find out you're a believer in Christ. Absolutely. Because they, they are very wicked person. You know what I'm saying? They need Jesus. They need somebody to talk to them about Christ. Mm. Because I have said to you, since the assassination of the president, the country upside down, like yeah. corruption. You know what I'm saying? But for me, it's a pleasure to be here because my message for all people who are listening to this radio network, the, the, net, the Truth Network radio, stop complaining. Don't be complaining. You have the Holy Spirit. You have Jesus. Wow. You have everything. You have the gift. And you have water. You have food. You have electricity. Because since the assassination of the president, no electricity in my country. People are begging for food. Why are you complaining? You have to give Christ Worship, worship the Lord for what you have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because people in Haiti, they are dying. They are suffering. Their lack of a lot of stuff that they have, that don't have, that they don't have. Right. But you have everything. Wow. Give God glory. Wow. That's Dr. Carson, we have so much in America. You have a ministry called Date the Word, which is really a bunch of networking. God just got you and me together and you and a bunch of other folks together. I get your email every day from Date the Word. You hear Robinson's story about how God miraculously delivered him and his yeah. family yeah. from the clutches of death. They were serving Christ in Haiti, and the Lord just opened a door through just a network of yeah. people connecting to Atlanta Rescue who connected to these guys. And next thing you know, there's armored guys there bringing you out and saving you. But, Dr. Carson, what is it a testament to Christ care for us, how he works through his body? Well, this is that testimony of the body of Christ at work. You got the Apostle Paul uh, when he first got started, he needed a Barnabas. And then he needed others to come alongside and help him get rolling. And then 
he is able to help other people. And so this is just a testimony of, again, how the body of Christ comes alongside, sees the needs of a brother, and goes to work to meet those needs. And it is. It's work, dedication, so that others who are in, in bad situations can be brought out. And, and this brother has made it so clear what the Haitians need more than anything is the Lord Jesus Christ because he changes lives and that could bring an end to that horrible corruption there because uh, righteousness exalts a nation. Wickedness is what's destroying Haiti. And what Robinson shared about not having anything. Here we have in America, we have so much. And Thanksgiving is upon us. It's this time of year. And who knows when anyone will hear this podcast broadcast. But the idea of being thankful and everything. Dr. Carson, you just heard from a man who said, look, there's no electricity. There's no power. Stuff we take for granted. No food. Begging for food. Your family could have died. How? What's the message of Thanksgiving here, Robinson? And Thanksgiving that... I can praise the Lord for what He's done in my life. First thing, He saved me spiritually first and physically. That's what I am. Praise the Lord that I have my son and my wife. They are safe, and I'm pretty sure they are safe spiritually too. This is my my thanksgiving that I can give God all glory is belong to God, and there is nothing is impossible to God. Just believe. Like the lepers, he believe and come to Christ with confidence, yeah. with faith. He's going to take care and of us. Wow. It bless. So the Thanksgiving date the word. I know there's a lot of verses on Thanksgiving. You read one earlier. You know Psalm 911. Someone's birthday was on. You know September 11th. Doctor Carson, your reflections on Thanksgiving as a man who, on a dark night just a few nights ago, was driving and you could be dead right now after a near fatal crash, deer uh, traffic, crazy stuff, and. You call me trembling, and we thank God that he's not done with you yet. Yeah. Uh, you, you you find yourself saying, Lord, I'm thankful for life. I woke up this morning. I saw the sun rise. And, um, and, and then you're thankful, again, for even the smallest of things. And, and I would challenge your listeners, uh, walk through your house and look at every little item you have and what we complain about other people around the world would be incredibly grateful if they had it and here we are complaining about these small things go through your house and give thanks for all the different things god has allowed you to have and then realize to whom much is given much is required we've got to take the gospel to the entire world because we got the greatest message of all and we should never be holding to ourselves I'm thankful for all these men in here. We got guys from India. We got guys from Haiti. We got guys from Ohio. Sharon, there's my son-in-law, and praying with a guy over there. Just a lot of ministry happening right here. A lot of pastors here encouraged, and, and you know, God is on the move. A lot of people. I just talked to a guy. Walked out of here, Fred, who has been leading the evangelism class forever. He said, "I got a call from a lady who was in my evangelism class three years ago." I said, well, what'd she say? She, he said, she has led 55 people to Christ. <laughs> he said, she, she listened. She took notes. He said, I had no idea. So what a blessing. But uh, Haiti is still on fire. There's still a lot of, 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 of kidnapping, corruption. Oh, yeah. There's still a lot of, uh, how can we pray for Haiti, Robinson? And uh, give us an update. And how can we pray for, for the country and for everyone there? The first thing that you need to pray, you pray for the government. Okay. Because the government, they are the one who lead the country. Yeah. All right. When the when the when they the, when there is a corruption, nothing works. You know what I'm saying? That's why we need to pray to, for the government, pray for the police officers, because one thing that you need to know: when I was in Haiti in my for Jack, the gang that killed the police officer, they use the uniform. They oh can my. come to you talk about if you hate the gang, and he talking about bad about the gang, they kill you. That's really bad because you don't know who you can trust. You don't know the true police officers. You don't know the yeah. false police officers. And there's Christians over there that need prayer. There's pastors. Oh, there's the faithful pastors. believers. I have some people who are faithful, some pastors, some missionaries. They're, they keep preaching. They keep seeking the Lord. So we need to pray for them, for the children also. Because some children, when they go to school, Anytime the teacher needs to call the parents, come quickly to get your children because the gang is coming mm. and they can kidnap them asking the money. That's right. why you need to pray for them. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. you have a heart to go back at some point, but you're here in America right now serving Christ. Tell us, give us an update on Robinson, how we can pray for you. Uh, pray for my son 
pray for my wife to also and pray for me for God can guide in me to involve me in the ministry. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And for God increase my knowledge to speak very properly and people can hear my message because you know I'm, I have a different accent, you know what I'm saying? Sounds Creole, French, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I need you pray for me and God can use me mightily and to keep preaching keep preaching the gospel to everyone Amen. just your word on thanksgiving earlier really blessed me that we you know it's, we, we have so much we need to be thankful and we need to be we need to be conduits or channels of thanksgiving to spread the good news to people people should be wondering why is he so thankful and yeah. then that opens the door for me yeah. like peter says be ready always to give an answer of the hope that is in you dr carson give us a thanksgiving closing verse what is a verse a thanksgiving verse you want to leave our listeners with to challenge and encourage them as we get out of here? Well, um, right now, I'm just uh, thinking of Philippians 1-3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Who is that person that you're just giving incredible thanks for when you remember them? And for us, it's it's friends. And uh, for some of you, it's going to be your pastor. Some of you, it's going to be family. But Philippians 1-3, just a great verse for, for Thanksgiving. Okay, from Dario, great Wednesday in the Word, a lot of prayer, a lot of ministry going on. And Dr. Carson, Brother Robinson from Haiti, pray for Haiti, pray for his family as they minister here and pray to go back. And Dr. Uh, Carson, what's the website so folks want to learn more about Date the Word? and get your? I get your email every morning. It's a verse for every day of the year. If you have a birthday, he'll tell you what your verse is. What's the, what's the website for folks to learn more about that? Yeah, www.datetheword, D-A-T-T-H-E. W O R D date the word.com go to it and check it out see what your verse for your birthday is this is the truth network